Good morning, everybody. So today is Wednesday, the second day of my stay here in Lille. And uh, Anton just made some sick breakfast. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, so yeah, we just woke up. Whenever we didn't just wake up, we woke up like uh, an hour and a half ago. And now we're going to eat. And then we're probably... Uh, are we, do you think we're going to go for a run today or we're going to just walk around? What do you think? I might not run. Okay. But maybe walk. Okay, okay. Sit. Yeah. So we're going to go walk. And then afterwards, there's this crepe event. Uh... And then I'm also looking on these other apps like Meetup and uh, a few other apps to see if there's any other cool events that we can go to. But yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. See ya. All right, guys, we're right now in the Park of Giants. Um, but I'm not sure why it's called that. It's kind of just a normal park, right? Nothing special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, <laughs> there, there is nothing special about the park, but it's close to our house. So we Walking thought maybe uh, just come check it out. Yeah. But now we're going to go to the 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 birth house of cdg which uh, is like the namesake of the paris airport and also was uh, the french general during world war ii so we're gonna go check that out and luckily for us it's free so stay tuned for that all right guys after a long walk we're finally here at the maison natale Charles de gaulle so there you guys go you can see there's a sign and um so yeah he was born here in 1890 and uh yeah he was uh uh, with the French resistance, the French resistance against Nazi uh, Germany during the 1940s. So, uh, yeah, we're, I'll, we'll show you guys uh, inside in a sec, but uh, there you go. So, stay tuned. All right, guys, so a little status update. So, we're just, uh, we actually didn't get to the, the museum because it was closed. So, it's opening at 12. Uh, it wasn't closed, but it was booked. So, now we're just going to get there and we're taking a pretty sketchy route. So, yeah. We'll see you there. Hey guys, we just got in the house and this is the first room, which is the greeting room for all the guests. So any foreign uh, visitors that came to the house would have been greeted in this room. So you can see there's a, there's a, there's a chandelier, there's a couch with a table, and there's also like a fireplace. Um, so pretty cool stuff. I probably won't show you guys every room, but uh, I'll show you the ones that I think are cool. So follow along. All right guys, we're right now in the grand living room, which is the biggest house in Charles de Gaulle's house. The biggest room, sorry, not the biggest house. So here we can even have a piano, as you guys can see. And then there's a bunch of photos of all of his ancestors on the wall. And then, yeah, so this room was actually only reserved for adults because it's where grown-up discussions happen. So, you know, no fooling around a lot of this room, right? And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's it for now. Yo, so right now we're in the office, guys, which was apparently the only part of the house which had a source of water. As you guys can see here, there's a tap. We're just in the kitchen, which um, actually, yeah, it has no type of water access, it just has a stove and a chimney, so it's not that interesting. But in here, we have uh, pretty much some area to wash. And then behind here, you can see the cellar where they would uh, store um, alcohol drinks and coal for the heating the chimney. But uh, yeah, this is where the maid would be pretty much. So yeah, guys, look at how these houses are designed. Essentially, each ha corridor or hallway had one door and then another door. So. You had to open two doors to get into each room, which is kind of weird, but that's what it was. So we're in the laundry room right now, guys. So this was also another room that would have only been used by the housewives um, because the bourgeoisie were the only ones who could pay them for that. And you can see what they were using back then is much different from what we have now. Uh, and it's also one of the rooms that was restored in 2020 when they had uh, renovations. But yeah, the, uh, this room was never used by the actual uh, the occupants just the housewives all right guys so we're right now in one of maybe the most important rooms of the entire museum because this is where cdg was believed to have been born so uh yeah you can see the baby crib there and then even behind me you can see uh, that was what the mother was wearing when she gave birth right yeah okay so that's pretty crazy no that's not what the mother was wearing that's what the what cdg was wearing when they uh oh when he was born his... oh but it's so big well i guess he's a big guy eh? Okay, maybe not then. Okay, I'm not know. sure what that is. But yeah, they uh, re renovated this one in 1983 as well, but we're currently standing in the room where he would have been uh, living for three months when he was still a baby, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so we're just about to leave, but I'm going to show you guys the last room. So this is the grandma's room, which is the biggest house on the second floor. Uh, you can see there was her praying space, and then this is her uh, was her bedroom. And then the last room is also... This uh, room, which is where CDG was resting when he was training for military school. So it was the guest room, but since they were always in Paris, they never actually lived here. But whenever he came to Lille, this is what the room that he was staying in. But uh, yeah, 
that's all for the museum. So uh, we're about to leave and I hope you enjoyed the quick little synopsis. Hi, Abton, where are you right now? So we are uh, at the cathedral. Yeah. On the other side, we have the smallest house in Wheel. So yeah, it's number 128, right? Yeah, that one. So yeah, well, house number 128. It's apparently uh, the smallest house, as you guys can see. It's very narrow, so uh, very interesting, but we don't want to invade in their privacy too much. Yeah, but, and if uh, you go to the gym too often, yeah, you can't get in. You can't get in. That sucks, eh? Yeah. But they even got the the barred entrance, so we can't get in anyways, unfortunately. But there you guys go. Alright guys, so we just finished up and we're about to get back to the house. Um, we're on this big wide street right now, which is pretty cool. And then it looks off to the train station, which is one of the two main train stations in Lille. So yeah, um, we'll get you the next update when we're eating lunch. Yep. So see you then. Yo, what's up? So like I said, we just want to eat lunch and we just got back. And then uh, Abtoon's gonna take a well deserved nap too after, hey? Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit fatigued. Okay, okay. No, no. So good, to, good to hear. And uh, yeah, we're gonna eat. So uh, see you guys later. All right, guys. So this is the next update of the vlog. Uh, ate lunch a few hours ago, and now I'm just walking around. Actually, Abtoon is Abtoon is like kind of sick, so he's not gonna be with me. Uh, like he's just chilling, and I'm just checking out this stuff. So right now I'm here. I don't know where I am, but. If you see through the wall, it says Femme V Liberté, which is like the slogan of uh, the like the Iranian freedom movement. So that's really sick. And then I'll also be looking at the the bell tower after that. Unfortunately, yeah, I if you caught it last vlog, I was I was supposed to go make crepes, um, but like my train leaves like 30 minutes after the session starts, so it's not feasible. But either way, uh, let's see what's in this building. All right, guys. So it turns out that this area is actually the town hall. So it's like an entire building and that includes the big bell tower that you see there, which is, stands at 104 meters in height. And it's the tallest bell tower in the entire region, according to a sign I just read. There's probably something higher, taller in France, but I think notice that it's the tallest bell tower that there is. Um, I think you can go to the top, but it's like 10 euros. So nah, no thanks. And there's no free student discount. So I'm just gonna have to pass that, but it's really interesting to see it from, um, from far away because it's a impressive tower and now we're going to the Paris point or something like that. So I'll keep you guys in check. Guys, next quick, quick pit stop is this park. Um, as you can see, all these parks in France. All right, let me just show you guys this cool lion statue right there. As you can see, all the parks in France are gated, gated because you can see all around me there's gates. But uh, yeah, I think it's more of a kid's park, but I'm going to check it out anyways because there's lots of greenery. So let's see. Hi right, guys, so right now I'm standing in the middle of the road. Um, you can see the, the, coffee behind, the coffee shop behind me is called Le Jean d'Arc because this is called Jean d'Arc Place. Um, and it's like an intersection of like 10 different streets. Like if you can see around me, there's like 10 different streets that feed into here. So I'm not sure how they get um, the traffic lights to coordinate. But um, yeah, it's also, uh, there's a statue of Jean d'Arc there with her horse, which I'll just show you guys in a sec. Let's go. Hi guys, so we're here with chilling with Jean d'Arc. Uh, it's pretty sick. Uh, I'm not sure if she was based in the north of France, but either way, uh, she's a very interesting historical figure and even, in my mom's hometown in Iran, they had a special school that was named after her. So maybe she has some heritage in uh, north of France. I'm gonna check that afterwards, but it's cool to see this anyways. Hi guys, so now we're in the Museum of Beautiful Arts, or I forget how you say it in English, of like uh, fine arts actually. So I'm in the free section because I don't want to pay. Uh, first of all, I don't like to pay. And second of all, I don't have the time to check out the whole museum, but I'm in the statue uh, section, which is free. So for example here, I mean, there's no description, but it's just a massive, soldier riding horse and then just to give you guys some uh, some stats so we got 140 statues here which weigh about 4.5 tons in total so it's pretty impressive and you can even see all of the statues behind me there but one thing to note is that for every 50 male sculptors only one was female so um, it's definitely a male dominated uh, kind of industry or discipline I'm not sure if that has changed ever since but yeah that's a quick little synopsis of the Museum of Fine Arts all right guys, so I wasn't gonna record much more, but this is a really cool story here. So because I'm here in Europe, because of World War One, that's where I work at uh, the Canadian Memorial, we have a statue of four men who were resistors of the war, I guess against conscription or something like that, and they were all four of them were executed. So this statue is here to commemorate them. Um, so yeah, they basically resisted conscription and enrolling in the army, and because of that, they were executed. Or for some reason related to the war, they were executed. So crazy stuff. And I, caught, I also couldn't leave out my boy Napoleon, so Friends, everybody knows who he is, and he's here in his gown with uh, his crest and his staff as well. 
Um, lots of symbolism on the statue, but I won't go into it, but it's just interesting how he's a very controversial figure, but he's also still commemorated. And yeah, guys, check out all this China. I don't think I even need to show you, but you can see from both sides, there's China for days, so it just makes you think of how much time it took for all of the craftsmanship in this entire world. It must have been thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours uh, that people spent, and it's now all in this room, so it's very surreal. Alright guys, so here, um, one of the last stops I'm going to make, there's actually two more, is uh, two statues, one of spring and then one of fall. So in the spring one, you can see she's wearing like flowers and she has a like, rose wreath in her hand. And then for fall, she's pouring wine from the, from the grape harvest. So it's some cool symbolism and you can even see wine on her feet. Um, next other thing is another Jeanne d'Arc. So apparently Jeanne d'Arc was captured by the English after the Hundred Years' War. And here's the depiction of her being burnt at the stake. So it's very graphic, but yeah, just take a look around this sculpture um, exhibit. I'm not going to show you everything. I'll only show you one more thing, I promise, and then we'll be done. Guys, um, I just found this other cool one. So it's Narciss, which basically was a guy who fell in love with himself, where he rejected like one of the most beautiful women, and then the gods punished him by making him in love with himself. So he would just stare at his reflection in the water always, and then he fell in the water and drowned uh, because of that. Uh, and then that's where the, the origin of the word narcissistic comes from. It's uh, from him himself, who would just look at his reflection all day. Hi guys, so I'm just about to leave, but I have to show you one more thing. So if you come here, um, we have a statue of Atropos, and me having read uh, Percy Jackson as a kid, it's very simplistic because um, right now she has her scissors and she's about to cut a, a piece of rope, which means she's about to end somebody's life. Um, and she was one of the three wise sisters in Greek mythology, so it's uh, quite a cool uh, thing that we got going. Alright guys, so we're in the library now. Um, I'm in the section where you can talk, but I'm not going to talk too loud anyways. Um, because in other sections I couldn't even record, even though it's sick. Uh, like, I can't really show you guys unless you guys want me to be silent. But uh, yeah, one thing I would recommend to everybody who's traveling is to definitely visit, visit the libraries. Very underrated, um, and especially like in big cities, they have some very sophisticated and cool libraries with many amenities. So definitely check out the libraries in the cities that you visit. Um, like here in France, they have like dedicated rooms for music for, for music for kids and a bunch of other stuff. So it's really cool. All right, guys. So I'm back here at home. I'm, I'm just gonna about to leave uh, to get back to the train station because I gotta go back to Arras. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have to be saying goodbye for now. But uh, I'm sure you guys will see uh, Abtin back again in the near future. So um, stay tuned for that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See ya.